Bob in Ontario, California, watching us on Free Speech TV. Hey, Bob, what's up? Hey, good day, Tom. You know, why don't we get to the bottom of this pharmaceutical thing already? It, it's ridiculous that uh, to give bonuses and raises, they use R&D as the uh, tactic for uh, stockpiling so much money that they don't pay taxes on, especially when their profit margin is far beyond anything that's a, that, that can be imagined. Mm -hmm. We don't get any of the active ingredients that are in pharmaceuticals that we take that are killing us daily um, in this country. We get them from outside the country, right. all of them. Killing us or healing us. And yeah, and Mike Papatoni was on my TV show last night and he was going through the markups. And I can't do these from memory, so I'm not even going to try. But I, I refer you to the YouTube that you can find of that, of his, uh, his going through the list. But it was something like 100,000 time markup for, yeah. for one of the SSRI drugs, a 10,000 time markup for one of the uh, anti-cholesterol drugs. I mean, it's just mind-boggling, the money that these pharmaceutical companies are making. Well, the thing, the thing is, Tom, if you, if you look at it in the, big, in the big picture, it's not only the pharmaceuticals, but it's the food industry and every single thing that's supposed to be regulated by some government agency. Not only have they gone blind and, and helped these corporations in killing us, these things are killing us. My question is this. When you know your government is beyond corruption, and working with these corporations and giving them the GMOs and everything else that is harmful to us, and they are trying to kill us, what do you do? Well, what you're describing, Bob, is something called regulatory capture, which is where uh, I write about this in, in uh, Unequal Protection, about how back during the, uh, the Bush the Elder presidency, or actually I guess it was when he was vice president, so it must have been during the Reagan presidency, um, Monsanto had developed the ability to genetically modify products, foods, but there, you know, it never existed before, so there were no regulations for it, which meant that it wasn't necessarily legal. So they went to the Bush administration and said, would you please put in place regulations to basically legalize these genetically modified foods? Um, one of the vice presidents from Monsanto, as I recall, I'd have to go back and read the book or look at the book and give you the exact details. But basically, he went from from being a very, very highly paid guy at at let's let's take Monsanto out of it at 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 a comp at a GMO company and became the regulator at the USDA took a job at the USDA for a couple of years wrote the regulations and then went back to work I'm, I'm quite sure it was Monsanto went back to work for Monsanto at, you know with with a bonus and, and huge pay and that revolving door uh, has at various times in our history been illegal. I mean, after after the Nixon scandals in 73, large chunks of the revolving door got, got uh, you know, banned. But those bans got taken away. I mean, you know, some by court actions, mostly by, by Republican legislatures. And so now we have this situation where, where you know, it's just an absolute free-for-all here in Washington, D.C. Whatever company has the most money, can afford to buy, you know, whoever they want, however they want, whether it's a legislator or whether it's a regulator. And it, it, I, I think the, the, this takes us back to this core cancer in our, in our body politic, which is money. And we need strong laws to enforce revolving door policies, to end revolving door policies, and to get money out of politics. And, and you know, that's going to... It's going to take some. It's a heavy lift, but that's the that's the the cancer that's causing all of this stuff, Bob. In my opinion, and if I may, Tom, it's just one other point. If I may, mm. yeah. the the thing about money in politics, okay, that could be easily cured if we had senators and congressmen that gave a damn about us. But I think it's more important to take money out of media. News organizations should not be profit uh, generated. Period. That should be against the law. They should just report the news, be honest. If they can't be kicked off the air, period, take their license away. This is how you protect us from, from Donald Trump and, and, and those who are against Hillary Clinton protects us from her as well. Yeah. So if we don't have the truth, we cannot make a choice. What you're describing, Bob, and anybody who is probably older than 50 or 60 knows this, what you're describing is the media that we had before 1987 when Ronald Reagan stopped enforcing the Sherman Act. Uh, excuse me, it stopped enforcing the, uh, the the Fairness Doctrine. And the Fairness Doctrine simply said that you have to, that radio and television stations, in order to maintain their licenses, 
have to program in the public interest. And that was determined by the FCC to mean present real news. So ABC, NBC, CBS all actually lost money on their news operations, but that was the cost of keeping their radio station and television station licenses and thus staying on the air. When Reagan stopped enforcing that, we very quickly saw the emergence of Fox News, the Rush Limbaugh show, and, and all this other stuff that, that has you know, it changed our, but, but more importantly, we saw the emergence of infotainment. Uh, within a year of that, I was living in, in Germany when that happened. I remember, I, I just have this crystal clear memory of driving down the Autobahn, listening to American Forces Radio. I think back then it was called Armed Forces Radio. And, and uh, you know, they said uh, CBS News has taken their news division under the vice president of entertainment. And I thought, oh my God, this is it. This is the beginning of the end. And sure enough, it was, that was 1987. So um, that's, I, I, I agree with you, Bob. I absolutely agree with you. Thank you for the call.